Hello and welcome back to another Zubby toy crafting video. Previously, we made some poseable capes for action figures, and since then I've received numerous requests to make a hood to go with the capes. I've gone through about five different hood designs, but I think I finally have something that'll work. And the best part is, this hood will be poseable like the capes. The materials you'll need for this project are about 26 centimeters of wire. I'm using 26 gauge copper wire, but you just need a wire that's easy to bend and that will hold its shape once bent under the weight of cloth. Wire cutters, scissors, pencil, paper, needle and thread, and the most important component for this project is the fabric. I like using a type of fabric called a knit because it doesn't fray and it drapes nicely. Most of the fabric at the craft store is going to be a cotton blend though, and that just won't work for this project. The hardest part of this project for me was designing a pattern, but the good news is I'm going to share my measurements with you to save you a lot of work. I start my pattern by drawing a rectangle 4 centimeters tall and 3.6 centimeters wide. Then I just add a smaller rectangle on the right side of it to make the part of the hood that swoops around underneath the character's chin. If you don't need that style of hood and want more of like a sweatshirt hoodie style hood, just leave that part out on your pattern. The pattern for the hood will look large, but keep in mind we'll be folding over all of the sides to sew in the wire and that will shrink it down quite a bit. After I have my design drawn out, I cut around the edges of it except for the very topmost section. I fold the pattern over along that top line and trace around the pattern to create a duplicate image. I find it's easier to just trace around my existing pattern this way instead of trying to recreate and remeasure everything. Plus, this is a lot faster. Once I have the mirror image of the hood, I cut out the rest of the pattern and trace it around my knit fabric. Then cut out the fabric. Now fold the hood in half, but make sure that your pencil marks on the fabric are facing you on the outside. Sew the back of the hood from the bottom up to the top to connect the two pieces in the back. If you need a guide on hand sewing, check out my video on how to make pillows and blankets for a toy bed. Now I need to cut approximately 26 centimeters of wire. I'm going to run the wire along all the edges of the hood, including the bottom and the entire front section. I bend the end of the wire up to a 90 degree angle just for now to prevent it from pulling through the fabric as I sew. For me, it was easiest to start sewing the wire into the hood by beginning at the back of one of the sides. I fold the fabric up over the wire, then I sew from the back of the hood and make my way up towards the front bottom flap. And this is where it gets a little tricky. When I get close to the edge of the flap, I fold the wire 90 degrees, followed by another sharp 90 degree angle to follow the shape of that front flap or front rectangle. I continue folding the fabric over the wire and make my way around the corners of the flap until I start to reach the curved section of the front of the hood. I bend the wire to follow the curve of the fabric and work my way up towards the front side of the hood to the very front top of the hood and then down to the opposite side. Once you reach that second flap, you'll need to bend the wire 90 degrees again twice to follow the contours of the pattern. Then continue sewing until you reach the back of the hood where you started. Once you reach the end, I shape the hood by stretching the fabric along the wire to make sure that I have enough wire, and only then do I trim off the excess wire. I like to fold the ends of the wire upon itself to help prevent it from poking through the fabric. In fact, I started doing this on my capes as well for the wire. With the wire in place, you can shape the hood to fit your character's costume design by having more of the face in the shadows, or even bending the front of the hood down to a tip. Here's how the hood looks on the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Taskmaster, but this design also works on the Hasbro Marvel Legends too. 
Now, I know Blizzard never wore a hooded cape, but he makes a nice model because of his plain body and plain head. You can even fold in the front flaps of the hood to change the style of the hood if you like. This project is a bit trickier than my others, so don't despair if it takes you multiple attempts to get the hang of it. Remember how I said I had to go through five different designs? Yep, you just have to keep trying until you're happy with it. And before we go, I have some photos to share from viewers making some of my previous projects. First up are some photos I forgot to include in my last video, and these are from one of my YouTubing buddies, Buyukasha Creations, and his channel focuses on stop motion animation, and he made some symbiote tendrils for his venom. My favorite picture in this set is the last one, because it looks like the symbiote is trying to take over Spider-Man again. Nice work, as always. Next up is Gyarados 66, and he made some 1 12th scale comic books. But then he went up and beyond by making all the interior pages as well. That's so cool. He also assembled some 1 6 scale comics for his sister. CB Prime Carlos on Twitter sent me these pictures showing off an original idea of turning my ice effect blast method into a symbiote effect for Venom. Then instead of Taskmaster receiving an energy shield, he made one for Agent Coulson that attaches with magnets. I love your creativity. Gusky made an arrow for his Hawkeye. Nicely done. And Gusky's gal, Ms. Royce, made his Loki figure a cape. Isn't that sweet? I told Gusky that she sounds like a keeper. Manuel sent me this photo of a chair he made. I love this picture. I think we can all relate to falling asleep while studying. Hussein8 on Instagram sent me a photo of the bed he put together and some symbiote tendrils for anti-venom. It's great to see anti-venom getting some love. I always liked him as a character. Next up is a cape by the Incredible J on Instagram. That's a wrestling figure, right? I would have never thought of converting the capes for WWE figures for their stage appearances. Good idea! The final photos are by Total Blackout 22 of the Venom Tendrils menacing Wolverine and Spider-Man. Poor Spidey just can't get a break. If you want to try any of these projects yourself, check out my Crafting for Action Figures and Other Toys playlist for the instructions. And if you've given any of my projects a try and want me to share your photos too, you can just give me a link to your photos in the comments below or send them to me on a social media site. Just make sure to say that I have your permission to share your photos and what name I should say for you. And that's all the toy fun for today, but we'll be making more 1 12th scale stuff in the future. If you'd like to stay updated, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And thanks for watching.